Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, welcome again to another episode of Age of Heroes, my podcast. And, and today I want to talk about something that it's, of course, uh, in in the aftermath of the trailer of Captain Marvel, which, uh, in my opinion, was I enjoy. It was good. There was a lot of good things there. There was a lot of, I would say, repetition from the previous one. Just added a little extra. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm pleased. I'm happy, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to March when uh, next March when we were going to be able to to watch this film. Uh, however, uh, there is a you know controversy as usual. All these movies generate controversy online, and the people get divided. Uh, about the character, they get divided about the film, they get divided about the trailer, you know, like in reality, it's sometimes it's hard to really tell what people really want, because, you know, uh, you know, like, the, you know, like the saying goes, uh, you're damn if you do and damn if you, if you don't. Uh, it seems like people want to watch more on the trailers, they want to see more in the trailers. Uh, but of course, uh, when they don't, uh, they expect more and they demand more, but when they get more, uh, then of course, or they don't get it, they, they get, you know, they get upset and they say they don't want to see anymore. They say that the, you know, the companies are revealing too much. So when the movies are get a little bit, you know, step behind and they just don't give as much, just a little tidbits here, then they get all, all complaining about it and they start crying out saying that, you know, that they're not doing enough and that the movie is flat and all of that. Uh, so which, you know, you never really, you can never really satisfy, you know, geeks. You can never really satisfy the public. Yeah, that's just bottom line. You have to learn to kind of roll with the punches and just do what your best and expect for the best. And in the end, you know, the, the public is going to determine if something is good or not. It's just the nature of the beast. It's just the way it is. Uh, but I want to ask this question because uh, I've been thinking about it. You know, I, I, it seems that they, they, in this case, the, the, the casting of, Brie Larson has been judged, has been, uh, you know, criticized a lot, you know, since the beginning. Uh, and I did mention this in another video. So a lot of people have considered her to be a boring uh, actress, that she doesn't bring too much to the table, that she's always, they say, in the videos, uh, in, in, in the trailers, which have been just a few minute trailers, just only two trailers, that she is a very boring, that she's flat, that she has no expression in her face, that her voice is very tinny. You know, I hear all kinds of things. And, you know, it really gets to the point which is annoying, uh, at least for me. It is annoying when people are making comparisons about everything, you know, in order to, and they dissect something or a person's persona just based on what they see in a small trailer. And, uh, you know, they haven't even watched the movie. We haven't even watched the movie yet to make the final comparison, to say this and that. And we're already uh, making, you know, you know, a real, yeah, we're scripting a whole review of the entire movie just based on that. And, and to me, that's just, it, it's sad that people do that. I understand, you know, we, we find ways of entertainment we find ways to enjoy ourselves and it's fun to talk about these things in, in some way but at the same time it feels that people they just throw too much shade into something without not really knowing exactly what is what we have in, in store what's coming and what it does is ultimately affects these movies and uh, you know takes away some of the enjoyment of just watching the movies to have fun with them to be a geek to be a child again going to watch this type of films uh, you you know, I, you know, that's the part that sometimes people, they decide not to watch any trailers and not to listen to the online. And sometimes people, they just go into this personal embargo where they just don't watch anything online. They don't read anything until they watch the movie. So they want to make up their mind. And I think when people do that, which I don't do, but I respect people that do it. I feel that they're making a smart move. You know, sometimes you have to kind of separate yourself from social media and, you know, you have to make your own decisions. You know, if you, you cannot just follow the crowd and, you know, go into this, you know, sheep mentality that people have and just follow what everybody else says. And, you know, and I believe, believe me, I have done that. I'm not going to say that I've been uh, not done that in the past. I have just follow what everybody else says. And ultimately, I find myself, you know, m you know, making a mistake. Uh, and I realize that, that sometimes it's better just to make your own mind, to make your own decisions based on your own personal experience and not based on the experience of others, of the, of the you know, in this case, the opinion of others that has 
has nothing to do, that has not been created uh, uh, in, an, in a direct way because they haven't really watched the film yet. So whatever they say, whatever they think, it's just it's meaningless. It's besides the point. Uh, it's just an opinion, an outsider's opinion. But yeah, I want to talk about this. And I, I, I this question, as you know, is Brie Larson the right fit for Captain Marvel? Is she the right person to play the part? Um, in my opinion, I did not know much about Brie Larson until Captain Marvel. You know, I watched a few of her films. Uh, to me, she was another actress, uh, young actress, you know, pretty young actress. Uh, she's doing some, you know, things here and there. I remember she, she, I think she was in Kong. Uh, so she was in a couple of things, which I didn't care much about. Uh, but of course, she has gained some reputation. And of course, she ended up being cast for this for this, uh, for this role. And, you know, and she's okay, you know, and I, I will tell you this, you know, from my, my honest heart. At first, I was a bit skeptical about this approach of Captain Marvel. Of course, you know, I'm, I'm an older person, so I'm more familiar with the old Captain Marvel and the different variations of Captain Marvel that came, you know, back in the day, you know, back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and all that. So I'm more familiar with that, the, you know, Marvel, you know, Captain Marvel. And, it, that's the one I, I kind of enjoy and, and, you know, as a person. But of course, you know, then, then Mrs. Marvel, she has been in, you know, she was, you know, Carol Danvers was also part, was a friend of, uh, in this case, uh, the original Captain Marvel. So, you know, and she was created as her own character in the 70s. Also, she had her own uh, comic book story, which was popular and, of course, and on and on. And, of course, Carol Danvers then came back in the, the, the 2000s as Mrs. Marvel, which was very well received, uh, you know, as a character. Of course, she was before that in the 80s and she was in all kind of stuff involved with so many different characters. So Mrs. Marvel, I always like her. Uh, I really like her as a character. Uh, and of course, now in more recent years, she, she became, of course, the Captain Marvel. She took the, the, in this case, the, uh, the, you know, the, the powers of Captain Marvel, you know, and, you know, she already had him, but what I'm saying, she took the, the, you know, the mantle of the Captain Marvel. So of course, this is the one that they're basing it now. This is the one that is more popular, kind of like they did with Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, with the Guardians of the Galaxy, the version that we have in the movies is the version that is more, is based on the, you know, on the newer Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, the older version, which I think in the end it worked out, you know, it really is good they did a pretty good job and they have done a good job with Guardians of the Galaxy so I'm not afraid to think that they're going to do a good job with Captain Marvel and I'm okay with it. I'm, I'm fine with it. At first, I was skeptical. But then, you know, say, so you know what? Let's just let it play out. You know, the, Marvel hasn't disappointed me yet. You know, some movies are better than others. But up to this point, the MCU has not been disappointing to me. It has been a good... Uh, experience, you know, for more than 10 years, for the 10 years that already passed, uh, that they had this year, uh, it, we have experienced great movies, so, so, so movies, but in the end, everything has been very concise, very well put together. They have created their own universe that is in reality separated from the comic books. You know, it takes a lot of inspiration from it, but it's not necessarily based or follows the same line, uh, uh you know, which is okay. It's okay. You know, it, it's a different experience, which I enjoy. I don't necessarily want to see everything be translated into film i want to see something there that respects the characters yes but i want to see something fresh and new i think that's what we're looking for i know some people want to see more about the same thing that happened in the comics but i'm not looking for documentaries you know a documentary is a totally different thing i'm looking for a film that entertains me and sometimes throw things uh you know different bones in different directions where i can follow different trails and you know i want to know that the, in the end the the ending is surprising and new and fresh but it respects the character but it's something that is refreshing and that's what i want to see that's what i want to watch so uh, of course you know i was a bit skeptical but you know of course there's been some backlash and there's still some backlash and primarily i think that the 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 thing that is happening uh the groups are divided into i noticed this and i have pay attention you know i follow i not only go to to facebook or uh you know i, I do use a little bit of twitter uh but uh instagram uh but i do see i go to a lot of forums i primarily go to forums and forums they have an older audience so they you know it's an older you know, crowd. So I see that there is a lot of backlash from older, you know, from an older generation in regards to Brie Larson. I see on, on in this case, Facebook, 
on YouTube, I see the younger crowd, which are more very happy with it. They're very excited. You know, they're very excited, you know, because of this, you know, so a younger crowd is more excited than the older crowd. The older crowd is a bit more grouchy about it. So there's a difference in between. In, you know, in my mind, in, in, me, in my case, I'm in the middle. Uh, even though I already uh, got, you know, I became, you know, I just, I got, you know, I got, you know, I'm 40 years old, you know, I've just got my brother just a few days ago. Um, now that it, that happened, I, even though I consider myself older, I'm still kind of young, young in many ways. And I've always been a little bit of a, uh, a maverick in regards to the way I, I think and the, 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 the way I, you know, I, 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 I analyze things. And sometimes my friends say that I'm pretty much a, I like to be the straw man in the situation. I like to play devil, devil's advocate. Uh, so, you know, I, I like to do it because in my mind, I'm thinking, I try not to think like everyone else. I try to think outside the box. And so sometimes I have to, uh, think certain things and analyze them and, uh, uh for, for what they are. And, and, you know, sometimes I have to put myself in a situation in the opposite direction, even when I don't agree with myself. You know, I think that's good when we pretty much have to analyze what we think and to analyze the reasons why we think that way. And sometimes we have to pretty much, uh, you know, uh, double check ourselves. It's good to do that. It's always good to double check yourself, you know, just in case. So I'm not thinking about the way, uh, you know, I've been thinking about the whole ordeal and and ultimately, I come to the conclusion that, you know, I feel that sometimes people and including myself, we tend to be so restrictive in the way we see things that we don't see beyond that. Uh, one, let's just put this into a clear perspective. First, Marvel, uh, in this case, Foggle, Kevin Foggle, had been very, uh, I think it's been great in really casting. And the, the people at Marvel have been great at casting uh, actors for this universe. Each one of these characters has been criticized. One of these actors or their choices for these actors before they were put into the the films, you know. And you know, you saw that with uh, Captain America, with Steve Rogers. You saw that with you know the the, the with Thor. You said with each character that Marvel has been, you know, these characters have been brought to this. Each one of them has been criticized prior to the movie going, uh, you know, being you know premiere on, on the movie theaters. People were very skeptical about this, this, this actors and actresses. Each one of them, they be a lot of people. I remember this. Each one of them, from the beginning, they have been, you know, skeptical. They were skeptical about Downey Jr. as the Iron Man. They were skeptical about each one of them. And but ultimately, now the same people that they were throwing shade at them, the same people that were criticizing them, the same people that criticized Gal Gadot, you know, as Wonder Woman, and now we're talking about DC, and the same people that have criticized each one of them. On these roles, uh, Cavill as Superman, each one of them, at this, at they have turned around and now they praise them and they, they sing their praises and they say that they were the best choices. Ryan Reynolds has Deadpool, all of that. The same people that criticize their casting are the same people that are praising them today. And it's sad to see that people turn around so quickly after they've been mocking someone and then all of a sudden they become fans. So, I can tell you one thing. This is going to happen with Captain Marvel. The same people that criticize uh, Brie Larson for the way she is or the way that supposedly her expressions in, on, on camera are the same people that are going to love her in the end. And they're going to say, uh, you know, months down the road, they're going to say that they, they made a mistake and they, they now love her. So, But in the meantime, it's just this battle of ideas, you know, people throwing all kind of ideas and criticizing a person because they say that she doesn't fit the profile, you know, and the sad part is that some people, they say, well, she doesn't look physically like her, like Captain Marvel. And when people say that, they say the same, the same scenario that happened with Gal Gadot. People were wanting someone with a more curvaceous figure. And in my mind, I'm thinking, what is the part that people don't understand in regards to characters? Yes, you know, you want characters to play the part, but at the same time, you're, I'm not looking to watch a porn movie. You know, that's the thing. You know, it's not about just watching somebody that is pretty much busting out of the, the uh, in this case, the outfit. You know, it, it might work in the comic book stories. It might work in the pages for some nerds. But in reality, you're looking for reality. You want for something that is, uh, you know, it's planted in reality. It's planted in, in real life scenarios. You know, you want to make it believable. You know, yes, you know, uh, you can go for uh, some of the artists that they draw these women in, in scantily clad, you know, uh, you know, out fits and all that stuff and you know i'm not saying that it's nothing wrong with that but some of these are not realistic 
the dimensions are not realistic. The comic book dimensions have never been realistic. You know, nobody said the same thing about, you know, uh, Thor, which is, I think he's a great guy and all that, the guy that plays Thor. And I'm just forgetting the names right now because it's early in the morning. Uh, but, you know, uh, but if you look at Thor in the comic books, you know, there's some muscular Superman, you know, all these characters, they had so much mus- muscles, muscles on top of muscles. The dimensions are unrealistic. You, I love Jim Lee Art, Jim Lee Art, but he is very unrealistic. You know, it's, it's, it's that's the way he is. His art just fits on the profile of comic book stories. And it's fine there. You're not going to find it on the real life. No one is like that. No one. No matter how much they work out, no matter how much muscle they put on, no one has that figure. So it's sad, but you know, that people think um, uh, right now in this moment still think that way. And that's just one poor aspect of it. They say, well, her voice is so teeny. Uh, and in my mind, it's like, sure, look, she is young. She is very young. You know, some women, they may have more presence on screen with their voices. And she might have a very young voice, but make no mistake, you know, this is what's not a mistake from the casting. They put it that way. They decided to create it that way with a purpose. Now, let me put, you, put it this way. I want you to be clear with this. I do have a very, uh, well, I'm going to say a deep voice, but I have a radio voice. I, I, you, you can notice that. And a lot of people follow my channel, they say, and, you know, I'm not trying to praise myself on this, that they follow my channel because they like the sound of my voice. You know, and uh, when you look at me, I know really much. I'm not really as a tall guy, a strong guy. You know, sometimes my voice doesn't compare to my physical appearance. But uh, uh, the truth of the matter is that that's the same. The same rule applies here. Uh, and, you know, not every person in the world has the nicest or biggest voice or a very peculiar voice. Uh, she has a normal voice like most people, like most girls her age. So. And a lot of these fans, a lot of girls, you know, a lot of people nowadays, there's a big uh, influx of women reading comics. Yeah, you don't see that maybe in the forums, but a lot of women buy comics. And yes, you might, forums may not have as many women, but if you go into YouTube, you're going to see a lot of women that are into comics and they have their own group and particularly younger women. So many of them, they feel they relate to what Brie Larson is doing. So, and many of them, you know, they have the voice. It's a normal voice. You know, I work at a company that sells uh, hearing aids. I'm going to give you this as an example. And uh, I was a sales agent for the company for the longest. And uh, the biggest problem with people that don't hear well, uh, older people pr- primarily when they have like higher frequency hearing loss, uh, they cannot hear uh, pr- particularly women. Uh, so technically, the, the, the bottom line, what I'm trying to say is this, that a lot of women have this type of voice. I would say 95, 85% of women have a, uh, or 95%, only a small percentage of women have a peculiar, more a deeper voice. Uh, but most women, they have the same tone, the same pitch. So, of course, uh, a lot of people that suffer hearing loss have a hard time understanding women or having a hard time understanding children. And that's just based on my experience selling hearing aids. So somebody that has a deeper voice is able to captivate uh, uh, at least the people to understand. People that suffer hearing loss, they can understand people like this with a more um, perhaps not as monotone tone but a more a, a, a more a deeper voice it's easier to understand the different frequencies so the same happens here so yes she just represents a lot of people it's nothing different the the fact that she's saying that she's not being um uh her facial expressions are not as clear I don't see that. I don't think that it's necessary to see that. I think she just, uh, it's part of the character. We try to understand the character. There's a lot of, I think in her expressiveness, there's also a lack of it. I think there is a lot to be discovered. And I think that's good. I think in, in part, I feel that they have done it this way, not because they want her smiling, but they want to, they want something that is someone that you just cannot read. And that's the part where I feel that this is what the movie is trying to do. And this are trying to do. And people are not seeing it this way. There's so much in it that I cannot really read much in her. It's part of the, the playing the part that there's a lot of unknowns that we don't know in her life. There's secrets that she doesn't know. Even in the, in the trailer, you can see she's trying to find out who she really is and discover who she is. So it's a lot of it. You know, you have to realize that she was taken into space. And we're going into the story and she was taken by the Kree and she was turned into really a living weapon. So 
she doesn't know who she is, you know, in, in part, she, she's just a warrior, but she, but she has a lot of lost memories and she's trying to figure it out. So all of that plays into part into the character, the way she's portraying the character. In my mind, I feel that she is the fit for what they're planning to do. Would I have seen another actress? Yes, I would have loved to see another actress. I think any actress would have done the part well, but I feel that they make the right choice. And based on previous experience, based on what Marvel has done until now, I personally believe that they make the right call. I personally, if they if they have done it so far so good, I still believe that they this they can do it and still it can work out pretty, pretty well. I know not everyone is going to agree with me. I know not everyone is going to be satisfied with this uh, taken uh, uh, that I have, and I'm okay with it. I just don't think that it's necessary for us to doubt what Marvel is doing at this point. Uh, you know, yes, there has to be a certain level of, you know, uh, criticism, you know, but at the same time, I feel that some of this criticism is uncalled for and unnecessary. Uh they have done it right. I feel that she is young, and I think that's what Marvel is looking, and that's what Marvel has done with all their actors and all those characters. They have long, they have looked for younger, uh, young actors and actresses, and they put them in the place, and they have pretty much, you know, boost their careers. And but they have done great. At to this moment, they haven't failed me. And if they fail me, I will say so. But I'm gonna wait until the movie's out and watch the movie to really make that determination. I'm not gonna do it before the movie, and I'm not gonna criticize a person. Person or throw shit at a person just because it doesn't fit my mental profile of that character that really has nothing to do with the scenario that is planted or presented in this cinematic universe. And we, I'm still looking into the comic part. You know, we have to put that aside. The comics are the comics. I love the comics. I, re I respect the comics. You know, I'm a comic book reader since, you know, many, many years now for more than you know, since I was able to read, since I was five, six years old, I've been re reading comics. So I put that aside. Now, this is a different story. And I need to go and roll with the punches here in this di in this different scenario. We have to adapt to what it is. And I've been, we've been adapting for the past 10 years. So I believe that I have to, you know, everything is going to be all right. So so what is your opinion about this? What is the reason you don't like Brie Larson? What is the reason you like Brie Larson? What is the reason you think this is going to uh, is going to fail? Or what is the reason you think this is going to be a winner just please share your thoughts below and thanks again for listening to my podcast don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you're watching this on youtube uh share the podcast with your friends uh that way you know more people can get to know me or get, get to hear me on a daily basis and uh check my patreon account if you want to support this channel any help you can give will be truly appreciated god bless and i'll talk to you again Bye bye